everybody, this is Mr. Barry, your physics teacher at Brooklyn Tech. And my name is Sabrina Isaac Barry, and I'm doing my bachelor's in math for the minor in physics at NYU. So Isaac, I have a challenge for you. Okay, so I'm going to give you a diagram, and you're going to unpack the diagram to create a problem. Do you be able to do it? To solve six kinematics problem. Distance, displacement, speed, velocity, and acceleration. Everything Wait, that's only five. Are we missing anything? Time. Oh. All right. Okay. So, what is this? I mean, it just looks like a line to me. All right. So, I'm going to put something on the line. Okay. Looks like we have a car. Uh, bye. Our car. You, you, so you, want, is... to put, you want to put a car? Yeah. I, I'll, I'll put a car. doesn't seem you have the drawing skills. All right, so th th there is a car. There you go, car. Okay. And how long is the road? The road is, I'm not going to give you this, yes. but I can give you the the initial. This is zero. Okay, do we get like some sort of position function? Position, yeah, i sure I can give you position function. P of T, uh, P of T is equal to 40 over 3 T squared. Okay. okay, what about the final distance? I can give you final distance, final distance, d final. You can keep asking me. Okay, it's like well, a kid asking the dad for more candy. Okay, what about time initial and final? Can you time at least give me that? Time is zero, time Genius. final. Time final is three over two hours. Okay, finally, some real information. Okay. okay. Uh, you don't block this. So I, don't think, I don't think there's anything else we need to know. So. No, I want to make the problem a little bit tricky. If you can go a little bit back so that the viewers, my student, can see it. A little bit up. Okay, wait, exactly on the line. Very nice. So I'm going to do something hunky funky over here. So um, over oh. here, I'm going to put a speed limit sign. Let's say 25 miles per hour. At the 20 mile of the tree. Okay. All right. And what's the point of the stop sign? So you, uh, well, you cannot drive faster than 25 mile beyond this speed limit sign. Genius. But, I mean, is there anything uh, that happens if we break it? Do we have to figure out if Mr. You, Barry broke the law? <laughs> no, you have to find more than that. You have to find velocity here. You have to find, okay, velocity here, I'll give you a zero. You have to find acceleration here. You have to find, uh, I gave you the distance, right? Mm -hmm. D2. You have to find um, D2. Okay, all the six properties of kinematics you're going to have to find. Uh, you're going to have to find V2. You're going to have to find A. Should we write A1, A2 to confuse you more? No, doesn't matter to me. Oh, sure? You? you sure? Yeah. People of 10, they... Outside, they look confident, right? Inside, they are shivering. Uh, okay. Um, G, you, you're going to find D final. You're going to have to find V final. You're going to have to find A3 or A final. Equal sign. I'm going to put equal sign. Okay. Right. So I think that's too much for you. No, it's easy. Okay. All right. So first of all, acceleration in it. What do we see from this position? From oh, this no position? calculus, by the way. Stop. What do we see from this position function? If the distance over time changes quadratically like this, then that means that speed over time will change linearly like this. And furthermore, if speed changes linearly, you're probably able to see that no matter where you are, the rate of change is the exact same. And of course, what is the rate of change of velocity if not acceleration, which means acceleration will be the same, constant. So AI, A1, A2, A3, they're all the same. This is just trickery. All right. So now, what are the actual quantities of them? Well, that's very important for us to find out, and that's what we're about to find out right now. So, first of all, we know P final is 3 over 2 hours. That means D final is, well, let's plug 3 over 2 into our equation. I can't believe this used to be hard for me. So this gives us 3 times 10 equals 30 miles. Great. 
So now we're going to use the equations of kinematics. So we know that delta x is equal to vit plus half a p squared. And here's the handy thing. We know that vi is zero. Good thing that uh, Mr. Barry gave us that. So we have that 30 is equal to half a t squared. Well, what's the time? Three halves. So now we've got acceleration too. Absolutely wonderful so far. So that means we get 30 is equal to 9 over 8 a, or in other words, a is equal to 240 over 9, which reduces to 80 over 3. So or, half. What? You wrote 30 is equal to 9 yeah, over 4. Yeah, 1 okay. half, yes, yes, 9 yes. over 4. Okay, and that gives us 9 over 8. So we get 80 over 3, which is about 26.33. All right, good. So now we know the acceleration. And you want to write acceleration at all three locations? Well, okay. Acceleration is 80 over 3 meters. meters. We're not going to write meter per second square because it's uh, so. Okay, 80 over 3 and 80 over 3. And here's the thing since the acceleration is constant and we know the acceleration, now we know the rate of change of velocity. Velocity. The slope of the velocity graph is just acceleration, which means that we know this is just 80 over 3t with no y-intercept since we know it starts at zero. So now we can just plug everything into that. We know that vf is equal to 80 over 3 times t, which is at that point 3 over 2, but just gives us 40 mph. Ooh, 40. That's above 25. Things aren't looking too good for Mr. Barry. All right. So now let's try to see if he broke. By the way, how did he get 80 over 3t over here? You don't even calculus. Well, because we know this is always at the same rate, and we know that the slope of the velocity function is always acceleration because slope is rate of change, and the rate of change is velocity is acceleration, which means that since this is a constant slope, then the slope of the linear function should just be equal to the rate of change. I mean, it's really simple. So simple, I'm struggling to explain it. <laughs> so then, first of all, let's figure out at what time this is happening. So what we have to do is plug this in in reverse. Essentially, we have this function, right? 40 over 3t squared equals x. But the thing is, usually we know t and not uh, position. This time, we know position, but not t. So you have to solve for t. So t is equal to 3x over 40 all square rooted. So now let's plug in. We know x at that point is 20 miles. So we get the square root of 60 over 40 or the square root of 3 over 2. Does anyone know what that is? Okay, good. So now we have 1.22 hours. So finally, what's the velocity at this point? The thing we've all been waiting for. Well, it's 40 over, sorry, 80 over 3 times the time, which is just 1.22, right? Well, let's estimate that as 80 over 3 times 1.2 to make it easy on you. So now we know that's 8 times 12 over 3, which is just 96 over 3. And what is that? 32 MPH? Wow, you broke the law by a lot. Mr. Barry is not going to be happy. All right, so that's it. Thanks, everybody, for watching. All right, so yeah. I have the last challenge for you. Now, I gave you the diagram. Can you show the diagram? Can you put a circle on the diagram? This is the picture version of the problem. Now, can you write the can you write the problem yourself using the diagram? Of course. Mr. Barry is on a one and a half hour long or ninety minute long driving trip. He 
you start from rest. And uses the position function. P of T is equal to 40 over 3 T squared. 20 miles in, a speed camera checks if he is breaking the limit of 25 MPH. First of all, find if Mr. Barry is caught and second of all, find all the quantities that we need you to. Acceleration, velocity, uh, velocity at the speed limit sign, and velocity final distance final as well as time at the speed limit sign. So that's the problem in writing.